I'm seeing you now. Yep, we are now on YouTube. Yeah. All, right. Yeah. All right, good. All right. You're here, Jeff. <laughs> Sorry, I just needed a, a bigger hammer. That's how all IT problems can be solved in life. Bigger hammers. Mm -hmm. That's Welcome, what everyone, to this very special edition of the Libertarian National Committee. <laughs> Look at Alex's that. beard. Oh, my goodness. Look at you. There was a comment earlier that Alex is preparing for his leading role in a uh, new romantic comedy. Yeah, hubba, hubba. <laughs> He's been locked away, letting things grow. He's blushing. <laughs> Good. Um, so we've got about 12 minutes before we start. Uh, if there's anyone that has... Informal questions, I'll take those. I wanted to outline what I think is gonna happen. And uh, usually what I think is gonna happen is what happens. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to start, uh, I'm gonna convene the meeting with um, public comment as we normally do. I'm going to outline what I understand to be the situation. We're going to shift to the chair of the convention oversight committee for probably about 20 minutes to outline what's in their report and where we're at. I assume all LNC members have read the report. I believe Mr. Hagan may make a motion to allow that report to be public, um, which we'd probably proceed with before the report starts. And after the convention oversight committee's presentation, I think we would move to questions for the convention oversight committee discussion and at that point, uh, motions would be in order to um, do whatever it is that we're going to do as a national committee to deal with the situation we're in. The uh, other thing I want to be really clear on is everybody on this committee has been very busy trying to come up with how we resolve some of the issues that we're faced with. There's a lot of stuff that's in our control and there's a lot of stuff that's out of our control. Um, what has been frustrating to me over the last week is I see a lot of people um, giving in to some of their, some instincts that are not healthy, I think for our party or our culture, uh, assuming the worst of people, assuming malicious intent when it's not there um, you know, letting go of charity, letting go of the idea that everybody wants a successful libertarian party and a successful convention, that everybody wants uh, maximum participation. I've seen some insinuations from some bad actors that there are plots afoot to take over or to violate the rights of the delegates who choose our nominee and our leadership. There are no such plots. And it is damaging to suggest such a thing, especially without any specific accusations that can be responded to. Um, I hope everybody takes that into account when they judge people going forward and that we can move past that kind of thing. Whatever we do will not be perfect, but we have to do the right thing for our party and for the delegates that we serve who have trusted us with the affairs of the National Committee. Um, as I said in the email that I sent to all of you on the LNC and it was on the public list, there is no better group that we could go into this kind of challenge with. And it's been an honor to serve with all of you for the last two years, some of you for the last six. Um, I'm not happy that we're in the situation we're in. I'm not happy that right after you know getting the first federal office holder in party history and finishing out a third consecutive term as chair, that whatever happens isn't gonna be what was supposed to happen, right? I'm not going to get to preside over the kind of convention I wanted to preside over. And we put this meeting off as long as we could in case something got better and now it's time for us to make tough decisions about what to do going forward. 
with the best interests of the party, the candidates, and most importantly, the delegates uh, in mind. And so um, I appreciate everybody taking time out of their weekend to do this. And uh, I will stop filibustering now. If there's any informal questions before we convene and start taking official public comment, I'm happy to answer them. I see there's a little Q&A thing. Let me see. I, I have the answer to Mr. Perry's question asking how to see a grid view of all the panelists. In the top right-hand corner, for those of you in Zoom, you can change between speaker view, gallery view, uh, other things. Okay. Do you have Mr. to type that or? Uh, well, Daryl heard me because he's on the chat. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Um, I A couple informal questions. I heard you had say that Mr. Hagan might be moving to make the report public, which is something that I was going to do as well. Is there any way that that can be done first thing in the meeting so that members would have, you know, good opportunity to start reading through it even during public comment because they might have a public comment on it? Yeah, I think actually um, the best thing to do would be if there is, uh, if it can be made public, and I don't believe there's anything in it that can't be made public, um, I would, I think I can just instruct the secretary to send that to the, the business list now. I don't actually think it requires a motion. I think Mr. Hagan was going to make the motion in case there was a dispute about it, but I think it's within my prerogatives as chair to just make it public. Uh, Dr. Lark, do you have a opinion on that? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, did, I didn't hear you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, um, I think that I can just make the report from the Convention Oversight Committee public uh, and have Ms. Harlow send it to the list. I don't think I need a motion to make it not confidential. I think that's within my prerogatives. Oh. I think you should probably inquire with the COC. Um, I, I did inquire Mr. Molman, who had drafted it, and he didn't think that there was an issue with it because none of the actual proposals got put in it. I think I would be okay with making it public at this point in time. Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I'm I'm not sure that I'm not sure that it's it's absolutely clear in a situation such as this whether a report from a subcommittee that is that is labeled confidential can necessarily, as a matter of course, be labeled unconfidential by the chair of the body. In this case, if the COC does not have an objection, then I don't I don't think there's a problem. Okay. I just wanted to get it out before the meeting starts. Uh, additionally, if well, I Mr. think Mr. Mr. Molman Hall's is report, raising his hand. Uh, who's raising his hand? Mr. Molman. Uh, go ahead, Ken. He's on uh, mute. Would you like, yeah, uh, sorry. Would you like the original document? So it's not, I mean, the one that it was sent out with all the watermarks and junk was a little blurry and whatnot. I can put the original somewhere viewable. Or I can just I, email it to Ms. Harlow's. Yeah, it would be best to send it to me if this is what we're going to do. That would make it easiest on me to, to take care of. I think okay. it's inappropriate to make this decision without the COC convening and having a vote. Well, well I think we're all here. Why don't we just vote? Um, because I don't think we have an opportunity to even discuss it. I don't know how I feel about sending it out without the watermark, for starters. Well, if it's going to be out, it's going to be out. It doesn't matter the watermark was to keep in there. people from sending it out. I, I, if I may, Mr. Chairman, oh, if, go ahead. I was Mr. looking right past it because I'm a dork. So, um, I, I, Aaron, I don't think there's necessarily any issue with, uh, with, with sharing that portion of it. And, 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 and I also want to ask Ken, did we share with the LNC that Google Doc that we have where we're looking at some options that are pr pretty uh, much um, ready to be signed once we no. hash out some legal language? Like, I'm okay I, I, with this, as long as sensitive stuff that needs to be discussed in executive session and isn't shared both prior to that. Me, yeah, Ms. Adams, assume. I don't think there's anything in this report that was confidential, truly. Okay. All right, I am going to send this to the secretary. Uh, okay. And the secretary will send it to the business list and 
That took a while. Okay, and, and, and in the last two minutes, Ken, you're sending th that document to the secretary, but then the thing, the, the Google Doc that we, or the spreadsheet we worked up with the viable options um, that are currently ready to go, um, do, do we, we want to share that? I think we should share that with the, uh, the LNC. LNC. That was actually my intent when, mm -hmm. when we yes. did it. But, but yeah. that, should, that should remain confidential because there are negotiations and other sorts right. of things. Right, right. So only an executive discussion. Decision. Right, okay. I just want to make sure we're keeping those two documents separate for now. I'm working on that right now. I apologize to, I just need to put some links in here. <laughs> to clarify what the second document that Ken is sending out is a group of the bids that we've gotten for a uh, postponed and, and possibly relocated convention. And we do want that kept confidential because there's contractual stuff in it. Right. That's the only part of it I'm concerned about. I just don't want it Separate to be as one document. One sending out. Okay. Wow, this chat is. All right, so Ken is sending the document to the secretary. The secretary is gonna send it to the business list at some point where there's a link to it. Um, I assume someone will put it in the chat for people who are participating by Zoom. Um, and theoretically, somebody who's willing to wade into YouTube comments could put it there too, but uh, Mr. that's the Chair? bottom half of the bottom half of the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Harlos? Um, if Mr. Molman could please send it to my Karen Ann Harlos at gmail.com because my LP email address, it won't, I won't get it till next week. <laughs> That's sure. the secret. All right. It is noon Eastern time. Welcome everyone to this meeting of the Libertarian National Committee, a very special meeting of the Libertarian National Committee. Uh, the purpose of today's meeting is to determine what we're going to do with the um, the National Convention, which is currently scheduled for Memorial Day weekend to convene at the JW Marriott in Austin, Texas, uh, in light of circumstances that have been changing both internally and externally outside of our control. Uh, the agenda, such as it is, will start with 10 minutes for public comment um, in which we can take questions uh, via Zoom or uh, answer questions in the chat. Um, followed by the Convention Oversight Committee presenting their report for approximately 20 minutes, followed by questions from and discussion from the National Committee. And uh, that would be the time to entertain motions or uh, discussion about what ways to move forward. So with that, we will start. Um, is there anyone who would like to comment or any questions from members of the gallery? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have David Jones on up, Daryl Perry on deck, Arvin Vora behind him, and then Evan McMahon. All right. Um, you can recognize them in order. All right. Uh, Mr. Jones, you are on. You can unmute yourself. Uh, David Jones. Mr. Jones. There you go. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Do you hear me okay? We do. Okay. Um, Mr. Fishman, you're very muddy. I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing you very well. Um, I, I don't know what you asked me. Uh, uh, you have asked to be comment. recognized to speak, sir. Oh, okay. Thanks. I mean, I, I have nothing. I'm just kind of hanging on here. So I, I have nothing to add right now. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Perry, you are promoted. You'll have to unmute yourself. Excellent. You can hear me? Yes. Sir. All right. So I want to, again, thank everybody for putting in all the work that they've done, which is what I put in the email that I sent everyone yesterday. And I know that there are a lot of strong opinions on all sides of this. And hopefully uh, there are no hard feelings amongst anybody at the end of the day. But I, I do want to, again, encourage the uh, LNC and the convention committee to take member health into consideration in the decision that they make today, as well as 
the health of family members and loved ones of members, plus any sort of quarantines that people might face, whether it's based on the state that they're from or the industry that they work in. Uh, so that's my comments and I'll go back to listening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Thank you very much. Next is uh, Mr. Vora. Uh, Mr. Vora, you are available. You'll have to unmute yourself. I think you're good, Arvin. You're unmuted, Arvin. Arvin, are you there? I'm going to leave Arvin as he is. So Arvin, when you can speak, I'm not disabling you. Uh, there we go. Can you guys hear me now? Now we can. Yes. Go ahead. All right. Um, so members of the body, member, uh, Mr. Chair, I just want to thank you for, for uh, all, all the work that you've done so far. And I do want to point out the, what I consider to be the foolishness of waiting till July. First, there's no possible mechanism to create a large-scale vaccine by July. So the risk, whatever the government says, of having an in-person convention, a giant in-person convention of, in July, would be staggering. Realistically, I don't see any state allowing a, a convention that large on a legal level. And I also don't think, as libertarians who believe in taking care of each other, we should be doing that in the first place. I do believe that we need to find a way to do this online, whether through Zoom or through something else. I see that now we're using Zoom webinars, which is a massive improvement from the, from the previous decision to use Zoom meetings. This is something that we can do if we make sure to practice it beforehand, have it broadcast ready, and do something truly incredible. Pushing the, the decision to July would essentially make it impossible for any candidate, with the possible exception of Justin Amash, to build the required national presence that you need to. I mean, a, a nominee has inherently more presence than, than a candidate. And July to November just isn't enough time to, to really take this seriously. So I ask and implore the LNC not to push this to July. July is not gonna be medically any different than it is right now. We'll end up just doing an online thing in July and lose all that time and momentum as it is. We pick our nominees too late. I think it's a terrible idea. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vora. And next we have Anthony Durazio. Uh, Anthony, you're gonna have to unmute yourself. Can y'all hear me? We can. Excellent, I did that right. Hi, I'm Anthony Durazio. For those of you who know me I, or don't know me, I'm the chair of the um, LPNY. Uh, I can speak specifically for my delegation. Um, New York is um, the, uh, we'll call it the epicenter of, of the um, COVID-19 crisis in the United States where under some pretty restrictive um, guidelines, um, the other 49 states are looking at us kind of side-eyed whenever we travel there. I can tell you that Texas still has a 15-day ban a 15 day required quarantine for anybody visiting New York State. Um, so doing this in person in Texas in May is, is foolish. I would implore you to look at this as two separate issues. Um, the first issue is what are we going to do about this year? Um, I think everything we can do to make this an in person convention delayed. Um, I know it will cause problems for some states, but that's going to be our best shot get any sort of attendance um, for this convention, um, especially from New York State. I think for the long-term future, this is not the last time we're going to be looking at a quarantine. Um, we're going to be, um, th now that the government knows that they can do this to us um, as citizens, they're going to keep doing it. And while we need to, as libertarians, keep fighting against it, we also have to live in this reality that we're going to be subject to this again. So having the mechanism for an online convention in our bylaws is something that we need to do sooner rather than later. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Durazio. Next is, uh, and you can tell me when you're done taking comments. Next, we have uh, Court Tienthaler, Andy Craig, and then Theodore Gherkin. Uh, hang on. 
I thought Evan was uh, going for me. Court, you are using deck. an older version of was, Zoom. Was, I cannot enable your speaking. Uh, was uh, Evan on deck? Was Evan on deck a long time ago? Uh, I do see Evan here. I don't know, Evan, if you hopped out or hopped back in. I do recall saying his name. So, Evan, I'm going to promote you. Court, uh, you're going to have to come back in with a more with a recent version of Zoom if you want to be able to speak in a webinar. Evan, you're up. You can unmute yourself. Hi. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Evan McMahon. Uh, I'm a delegate from Indiana, um, and I'm immunocompromised. Um, every year I go through some level of isolation and quarantine because of the flu. This has been a heightened issue. Um, and as such, we had our state convention uh, March 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, and after dropping the national chairman, Mr. Sarwalk, off at the airport, uh, we went into lockdown at our house. We started restricting who could come to our home. Um, we've required packages delivered to be quarantined for 72 hours. Um, we didn't leave the house unless it was an emergency or to get grocery supplies. And we were very careful about how we did that using our own PPE. Um, we have no intention of lifting our restrictions in our home um, for my safety, the safety of my, my other family members. Um, even though the state of Indiana uh, has just yesterday released its five-phase plan for reopening the state. It does not allow gatherings of 250 people or more until after July 4th. Um, my boyfriend uh, is a new member of the Libertarian Party, and it, it took a considerable amount of effort and time on my part to get him to be a Libertarian, um, is now upset with um, being told that you know, the first convention he was going to go to, he was very excited about. Um, but now hearing that, you know, the life and safety of our family um, is being put in jeopardy to participate in doing the party's business, he's, he's upset by it. Um, I'm upset by it. We have absolutely no intention of participating in an in-person meeting. Um, part of my professional career, I go to conventions around the country twice a month. Um, I will not be going to any until 2021, uh, which means I take a significant financial hit. Um, I had purchased a table for the Austin convention. I've since asked for that money to be refunded uh, because I won't be able to participate. But if an online event, an online convention was held, not only would I uh, request that that money stay with the party, but I would increase it by another $500. Um, so that's, that's my position. I would like for the LNC to realize that people like me and our family, um, people who are elderly, people who have other underlying health conditions, which by the way, obesity is considered an underlying condition, um, are putting themselves at risk to do the party's business. And it's, uh, terrible that we're being put in the position of, you know, not being able to participate or risking our health and safety to do so. Um, so with that, I would encourage you to support an online convention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMahon. Um, we have now exceeded the 10 minutes. How many people do we have on deck, Mr. Fishman? Uh, you have Andy Craig next, Theodore Gherkin, and then Mimi Robson, and that would be the end of people with their hands raised. All right. Um, I intend to hear from those three people, and then that'll be about 15, and then we'll move into the Convention Oversight Committee report. Um, Mr. Craig, you can unmute yourself and speak. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, we all pretty much know each other. Uh, Andy Craig, I'm a delegate from California this time. Um, I just wanted to build on the point that Evan made that proceeding with an in-person convention is not only putting delegates like me, I'm diabetic in an in a incredibly difficult position of having to choose between our health and safety versus being able to participate in the party's business. It is also putting us in the position of anybody who is trying to, to um, go out and campaign. Anybody who is trying to, uh, a candidate for LNC, which I am supporting, or a presidential candidate, um, a campaign, I've worked on the pres a presidential campaign before. That's all, a lot of people trying to go out and convince people to show up. I cannot in good conscience try to pressure or ask anybody to show up an in-person convention this year 
Um, and, you know, I feel as, as uneasy as I feel about my personal safety, um, I won't be part of pushing that on to anybody else and trying to pressure them to show up to, you know, I mean, it's no secret. I'm, I'm heavily involved in the internal political ecosystem of the party, like all, a lot of us are. Um, and, you know, I, I have strong opinions about things, but um, I am treating people with basic human decency and not trying to pressure them uh, to do something they feel isn't safe and rightly feel isn't safe um, trumps any political goals I have for the LP. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Next is uh, Theodore Gherkin. Mr. Gherkin, you can unmute yourself and speak. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, I think that we essentially have two choices here. We could have the convention later in the summer, which I think poses a lot of challenges because a, uh, a lot of ballot, a lot of states for ballot access requirements, we need to have a nominee for any debates that we might possibly have a chance to go to. We need a nominee, and for any real shot at campaigning to get any traction, we need a nominee. And I think pushing the campaign back just doesn't allow us have to have enough time to make the advances that we need. So I think our only option really is to have an online Zoom because I think we're in a really good position to advance liberty this year, but I think that'll be severely hindered if we have to go another few months without a nominee. Thank you. Uh, and the last one is uh, Mimi Robson. Mimi, you can unmute yourself and you'll be able to speak. Hi, this is Mimi. I'm actually here with a few other people, but I just wanted to really urge the, I know that people are talking about safety and things. I think at this point, we don't know what will happen in July. We don't know what the situation will be with, with the virus. And I believe it's very important that we have an in-person convention. I, I believe it can happen. I think if by July it can't, then we go to these other options. But right now I think it's far too soon to do that. Um, I think it, I know some people won't feel comfortable going. That's what the state has alternate. I believe that it will be a well-attended convention if we do that. And I think it would be best for our candidates. I'm actually here with one of our presidential candidates, Adam Kokesh, and he agrees. And, and many of the presidential candidates agree that they need convention to get their campaigns going. They're not so much worried about losing the six weeks as losing the media attention. Yeah, absolutely. There's very little pop or news worthiness to an online convention that we know would have a lot of trouble if we have to wait. I would prefer to wait. I think what we have right now with the beautiful field of primary candidates I I'm up against that having us enjoy this time for online debates and getting ready for a physical convention would be the best thing for the momentum of whoever the nominee is. So I just wanted to add that to that. I, would, I, I think everybody on this committee saw that California actually passed a resolution talking about our ballot access, which is something very important for this. It wasn't a threat, it's the truth. And I hope everybody read that. Um, <coughs> I just, I really urge this committee to not act rashly at this point and seriously consider postponement. And again, if then we can't do it in July, then we'll have even more time during this time to start planning for the eventuality of not being able to do it. Because right now I don't think we even have a plan for an online convention anytime sooner than that. I don't think we have a viable plan. I don't think we have a plan that would work for many of the states for our delegates, I just strongly urge that you vote as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mimi. Um, with that, we've gone a little bit over on public comment. We will proceed to um, report from the Convention Oversight Committee. Go ahead, Mr. Hayes. So for this portion of this, I think since, since Ken was the, the primary author of, Chair? of that report. Uh, sorry. Hold on, Mr. Hayes. Uh, is this a privileged motion? I believe so. I believe we need to take attendance. Oh, for, yeah. I, I'm prepared to do that. Thank you. Um, please uh, say present um, when I call your name. Um, Aaron Adams. Present. Philip Anderson. Whitney Bilyeu. 
she's muted, but I see her. Okay. Mr. Bishop Henchman. Present. Present. Tim, Fiera, Tim Fiera. Present. Pat Ford. I'm present. Sam Goldstein. Present. Tim Hagen. Present. Jeffrey Hewitt. Present. Susan Hogarth. Here. Dr. Lark. Present. Mr. Longst Richard Longstreth. Yes, I'm here. Alicia Matson. Present. Alex Merced. Right here. Dustin Nana. I, I see him. Here. Yeah. Um, Stephen Nicella. Present. Justin O'Donnell. Present. John Phillips. Here. Bill Redpath. I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> and Mr. Sarwork is here. Paige Sexton. Here. Joshua Smith. Present. Elizabeth Van Horn. Present. Francis Wendt. Present. Okay, Mr. Chair, I show that the entire LNC is here with the exception of Mr. Anderson. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there's not anything else before, uh, Mr. Hayes, you have the floor for about 20 minutes um, and feel free and delegate that time to other members sure. of your committee. And, and, and I just wanted to make, because Karen and everybody's very, Bishop is, Bishop is here. So just everybody needs to know that. So anyway, so I like Ken, um, since he's the chief author of that report that was sent to um, the LNC um, and knows his way around it better, I think him presenting that would probably be uh, uh, the, the better way to go. And then if we get into some other things relative to um, where we're postponing to and stuff like that, we can have other members jump in. Okay, Ken, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right, um, long story short, this report tried to compile the pros and cons of each option. Uh, the COC does have a recommendation uh, it does also include information relevant to the conversation that may or may not be discussed in executive session regarding ballot access, uh, potential legal actions, um, timelines, things that are of, of a more sensitive nature. Um, we have also uh, some questions that were asked uh, by some folks kind of outside, things that should be considered, uh, the various issues, and uh, also contains relevant portions of Robert's Rules of Order our bylaws and our convention rules of order. So the goal here was to provide the LNC with a full picture. Uh, and if I have misrepresented anything or if anything's misrepresented, I apologize. I did try to capture the pros and cons of each option uh, fairly and um, put them in this report. So again, if I've if anything's misrepresented, I apologize. But uh, it, Mr. Hayes, do you want me to go into anything in specific or do you just want me to do that? No, I got to unmute somebody. Uh, give them an overview, uh, I guess, kind of hit the options and, and uh, focus on what the COC's main focus would be in our scope. Okay, so uh, prior to the meeting, the COC uh, had two motions to bring forward. Uh, the first of which is uh, in regard to option one, which is Memorial Day in Austin. At this time, it is not reasonable that we will be able to meet in Austin due to uh, regulations on the number of people able to meet. And so there is a motion that the COC brings forward to the committee uh, regarding uh, the execution of the impossibility clause. And that, that is in the report. Uh, option two is a postponement. That is the recommendation from the COC. Uh, those of you who have seen the document can read the pros and cons, or I hope the LNC has had the time to do that. Um, I'm sure that there will be debate over that. Um, but that is the recommendation, and um, that also is the second motion, uh, which would need to be amended probably to, that's up to you guys to deliberate. Um, option three is the multiple remote location and or online convention or electronic convention or whatever name it's going by. And the uh, pros and cons are listed there within that. There are three different main sub options that have been proposed and floated about. Uh, we have tried to capture the pros and cons of each of those sub options, which would be the um, going email only, a 51 delegate solution or 51 state solution, 
and a 1046 Zoom or webinar or whatever uh, style solution. And so we've tried to capture the pros and cons of each of those. Uh, the fourth option is, um, which was floated around, but hasn't been talked much lately, but the LNC chooses the POTUS, trying to use the uh, filling a vacancy uh, language that exists in the bylaws. And again, the pros and cons are listed there as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so those are the the, pro, the, the the four options and kind of a brief overview of each of those. I don't want to take too much time going over. I don't think I could even read all that in 20 minutes. So um, Mr. Hayes, is there anything else that you would like me to go into? You're muted, Dan. Um, I, um, I think that Dan should go, Dan, I think you should go into, uh, since option one is going to be the first order of business, that motion that we come to, why don't you go into the uh, situation concerning the Austin Hotel at this point in time? Under yeah, so, so of course, uh, uh, most people, that, everyone that was staying at the hotel are aware that there was an oopsie um, and they canceled all of those rooms. Um, on top of that, there are still, um, you know, some stay in place orders and, and stuff like that coming in, in travel restrictions um, coming from the governor and the mayor. Um, and, and so to, uh, there's literally no chance we're going to be able to do in person in Austin over Memorial weekend. Uh, we have been talking with them and negotiating with them relative to um, postponing to some point in July and moving out into the convention center. Um, the, there, there's some, some things that we probably would discuss in, uh, I guess, executive session relative to that. We do have some uh, other, say, if we, so if the LNC did follow that recommendation to can't enact the impossibility clause, and then uh, I think come to a mutual agreement with the hotel that yes, we are, you know, doing this, I think that's the best way to go. Um, but um, obviously, we'd be postponed, well, doing something different. The, the uh, in-person and, and within this committee's purview, scheduling another convention, um, we have recommended uh, looking at July and early July, we have located at this point um, at least two venues that would allow for socially distanced safe conventions that we probably could uh, lawyer out in a, just a couple or a few days and get ready to sign the contract. Um, there are some other bids that still need a little bit of tweaking and probably in just a few days would be at that same sort of a point to where we were comfortable with the level of risk or lack of risk that would exist for the party by putting these on. Um, so, so the postponement option I think is, is, is definitely there. Um, I don't want to get into a whole lot of speculation about, you know, um, other aspects beyond just simply putting on the convention, but for anybody that thinks that we can't, at the way things look at this point, it looks like we can. And, um, you know, like I said, I could get into more detail in that in, in probably executive session. Um, Sam, anything or, or any of our members, did I miss anything in there that you were suggesting we go over? No, I think that at this point in time, we should probably bring forth the motion to cancel the contract. Uh, Ms. Harlos has a question first. Sure. And I don't know, Mr. Fishman, if you're paying attention to who's raising hands, um, I am not. Uh, I am. We currently have no hands up from the gallery. Okay. I just saw Ms. Harlow's put a comment. Uh, Mr. Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman. Dr. Lark's hand up. Dr. Dr. Lark and then Ms. Harlow's. Actually, uh, I'll yield to Ms. Harlow's. Ms. Harlow's and then Dr. Lark. Um, thank you. The question I had for the convention committee was in the options, I did not see something that had been discussed before, which was a combination in person convention with a um, limited number of remote locations for states that might meet certain extreme criteria like travel restrictions or, or so on, whatever those criteria might be. I, I didn't see that as one of the options and I was wondering why. Um, so that in our, in our um, plan for in-person uh, postponed conventions, um, a, we, we have been asking for um, dedicated lines uh, for Wi-Fi, or I shouldn't say Wi-Fi, for internet 
with the intent of if we do have actual whole affiliates and states that are locked down that are unable to travel with the expectation that that would be allowed for. So that is part of our, our plan. That's part of the, if, if you call it the postponed plan, it, it's, it's part of the postponement plan that if it truly is, people are unable to actually re, as a whole state travel, we, we have that in our plan. Uh, just one follow-up, Mr. Chair, if you'd allow. Quickly. Um, Mr. Hayes, if the report could be somehow amended to include that, I think members might be confused with that option is not on the table because it makes it look like we're not considering them at all. Well, I, just just the suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. We're, we're the Bottom larger mark, committee is meeting at this point. And so um, while the subcommittee remains, um, the larger committee has the we have the options that we have and they're not limited to necessarily what's in the report. Right. Dr. Lark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thanks also to all the um, COC people for their tremendous work. Um, I would like to have a statement, if possible, as to what exactly is the situation legally in the state of Texas and the city of Austin, uh, because if we do seek to invoke an impossibility clause, it's quite possible that the, these particulars might be held against us uh, by, the, uh, by the Marriott. So. What specifically is the situation regarding um, social distancing, the ability of people to gather? Uh, what's what's the deal? It depends on where we go. Well, Sam, Sam wants to jump in. Sam and Whitney want to jump in. So okay, well, well, I'm going to address a part of it that Dr. Lark didn't consider, and then I'll let Whitney address the in. Wait, wait, wait. Part. Time out. Time out. No, no, no. Dr. Lark asked a question. I would like Dr. Lark's question answered. That's what I'm answering but there are two parts to it. He asked about the legal implications of cancer. Of, no, of he smoking. asked what, what is the legal environment in Austin and in Texas and with the hotel right now that we would be using, that, that would be the reason why it would be impossible. What are the actual legal restrictions right now in Texas and in the city of Austin? Yeah, I'll let Whitney take that one on. Okay, so I am trying to pull up the city of Austin ones right now, but I do have the, the governor's orders in hand. So as of yesterday, um, the stay at home order no longer exists. Uh, it is, everything has been, well, I shouldn't say everything. Hotels, oddly, and convention centers are like the one thing left out of the order. Um, but as of yesterday, the stay at home order has been suspended. Um, restaurants, um, dine-in restaurants, movie theaters, museums, things like that where people typically would go and, and you know, gather, I guess, or have multiple people in one place are allowed to operate up to 25% capacity. Um, the uh, social distancing stuff is not an actual law it's, or, or a rule. It's a, they're, they're saying people should abide by the guidelines that are put out by the um, CDC, um, but there's no actual law requiring any of that. Uh, in two weeks, the expectation is as long as the trends are, you know, look like things are easing up with the virus and, and all of that, they're going to uh, extend the capacity limit, increase it to 50% for the places that I just mentioned. Um, so the, you know, the, the order itself goes through all of the different types of, of businesses where there tend to be crowds and they are all, as of yesterday, allowed to open back up. Not all of them are, some of them are choosing not to. But again, as I mentioned, hotels are not specifically mentioned here at all in this order. So I think, um, uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I can't answer that question, but we're talking about right now. We're not, we're not talking about two months from now. So the expectation would be that all of these things would, that the restrictions would be even less in Texas come July or later this summer. Uh, I still need to pull up the anything that might go beyond this from the mayor of Austin. But Are you I don't have that brushing in my your teeth there. with yogurt or what? Uh, What's that? Dr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, if I may also, if I may ask a specific issue. Go I, ahead, uh, Dr. Lark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. What uh, my understanding is, perhaps incomplete, that there is a range or there some sort of re regulation concerning people coming into Texas from out of state 
uh, and that they may have to engage in self-quarantine. What is the status of that situation? Um, the, the last I heard, and I don't have that one in front of me, but the last I heard, there were only five specific states that were... I, I can answer it, Whitney. But there were also airports. Um, the, some of the main airports were, they're restricted. I do not know what that looks like once people get here, you know, how they're being checked or how they're being quarantined. I don't, I, I can't answer that because I literally know no one who has the experience. It's <clears throat> so I will answer Dr. Lark. Um, according to the Texas Department of Public Safety, current travel restrictions on Texas, there's a mandatory 14 day quarantine for any travelers entering by road from Louisiana. Oh wait, nope, that one's got eliminated. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, The ones that are still in place are the air travel restrictions. If you fly into Texas, from the state of New York, state of New Jersey, state of Connecticut, state of California, state of Washington, city of Atlanta, city of Chicago, city of Detroit, or city of Miami, you will be required to fill out a mandatory self-quarantine form and provide information to the Texas Department of Public Safety about where you will spend your 14-day self-quarantine. Um, I have anecdotal evidence that they're enforcing that by having DPS agents go out, but it's, you know, anecdotes are not data. I just know that's what the, the legal thing that the state of Texas has um, limiting travel. And that from my analysis with Mr. Hall, that government restriction on travel would be one of the potential reasons why we would be able to execute the impossibility clause with regard to the current contract for Memorial Day weekend in Austin at the JW Marriott. Mr. Chair. And, and, and Mr. Uh, Chairman, actually, um, by the way, Louisiana's not in the list anymore. I, I no, actually- The, the road restriction, they took it off. Yeah, the road, but, 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 but for the airline, did you, I didn't hear you say coming from New Orleans I, either. I'm just reading it. I, not there. I, may, not there. I'm not, I might so not be I, illegal anymore. Sorry, sorry wait. Uh, Mr. Goldstein and then Mr. Hayes. Uh, the additional, complication here, Mr. Chair, is also that several states have forbidden travel outside their state borders. I know Kentucky and Virginia, Virginia expires on June 8th, so that would technically make it impossible for any of the Virginia delegation or anybody who's coming through Dulles or I guess that's the only Virginia airport that we'd be concerned with couldn't come to the convention. I was not aware that those states had hard limits. I thought they were doing the you shouldn't travel unless it's essential. Mr. Chair, Kentucky definitely has uh, such a limit at this time with the exception for shopping or work. Okay. Um, Mr. I, I Chair, so- Mr. Hayes now, go ahead. So of course, um, not getting too much into the whole contract here, but the contract doesn't just say in effect while, while the convention is going on. It says upon the occurrence of, and lists a whole bunch of things of which I think there's four of them, you know, go, uh, uh, acts of God, disaster, transportation cur curtailment, which is one of the things you're referencing, and I can't think of, uh, oh, government regulations. So I think right. those four things would, would certainly make it to where, you know, they, they have occurred. And, 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 it's, and it's written that way because just because that occurrence or, or that, that enforcement or, or law or restriction regulation goes away doesn't mean that suddenly, oh, hey, we're all going to a convention. I mean, people's We, we still have to and, determine and whether or not to yep. execute the impossibility clause. Yep. We just have the grounds at this point. I, I, I think so. Um, I have Mr. Bishop Henchman next, seeking to be recognized, and then Mr. Longstreth. I have the Austin, uh, Texas order in front of me. Um, it does require social distancing requirements. Um, the date on that? And it has mask requirements and prohibits all gatherings larger than household as well as prohibiting essential travel. And this was issued, let's see, effective date, April 13th and continuing until May 8th, unless terminated or extended. And so we haven't hit that termination. So um, it sounds like what the situation on the ground is, uh, in Austin may be different from Texas at large. So at present, no mass gatherings are permitted in Austin? According to this. Okay. Um, Mr. Longstreth. Yes, so I wanted to, to the uh, 
Convention Oversight Committee um, on option three, where you're talking about remote locations and online convention and balloting. There was language uh, listed in the cons that indicates that the bylaws uh, mechanism and bylaws committee has no idea on some of these options. There has been a draft report that has been circled twice now um, showing the bylaws committee's work in progress. Uh, and it seems to me that this convention oversight committee deliberately, deliberately uh, ignores the work that the bylaws committee has done um, and does not even list electronic balloting as a legitimate option. It lists it as a sub option related to uh, an online convention and those are very different things. So I was wondering if uh, to, my two questions are, have we really gotten all the options from the convention oversight committee and uh, why was uh, the language of the bylaws committee uh, not mentioned in this report and in fact alleged to not exist? If I may, if I may speak to that, um, Mr. Woman. the the committee, the bylaws committee, to my knowledge, has not passed any language that there have been things circulated, that amendments have been made to those circulated documents that were widely circulated on Facebook, that since they have not been passed, um, could be easily amended again. Certainly within the committee, you can always move to reconsider or go back and, and look at it again. But at this time, no language has actually been passed by the committee. And I believe that is the way it was represented in the report. If, it, if it's, And that was the intent of how it would be represented, would be to say that it has not been passed out of the committee. Um, also in that, there's been a lot of confusion on Facebook and social media about what is an electronic convention. And in that, one option is the email balloting. One option is the 51 state option and one option is the the zoom and so because they're all kind of lumped together by the general public as electronic convention uh, and that's why the title is kind of an and or thing um, that was all lumped together I mean certainly we could have broken those apart and and they're presented in a way they, they're separate paragraphs on purpose so that um, it is clear that they are separate options and, and I, I absolutely agree they are different things entirely um, and, and I don't have any sense of the people who are asking for an electronic convention, which mechanism is the most popular amongst those, that whether it is the, the email, the 51 state, or the, the 1046 Zoom seminar, and I don't know that anybody has that information. So that is the way it was presented, why it was presented in that way is because they're all kind of lumped together generally by the public and it, that decision, if it goes that way, would need to be made. Okay. Um, I have Mr. Hall without yes. objection from the gallery, then Ms. Van Horn. Go ahead, Mr. Hall. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah, thanks. Um, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that the executive order that um, Governor Abbott ent entered and took effect on May 1, does contain mandatory language with respect to social distancing. It says, every person in Texas shall accept where necessary to provide or obtain essential services or reopen services, minimize social gatherings and minimize in-person contact with people who are not in the same household. Um, so I, I think that's obviously one of the key terms in this executive order that applies to this situation. So I wanted to make sure everyone knows that that is shall mandatory language. Um, and the executive order with respect to the one that the city of Austin entered, I, I think it does contain perhaps more explicit and restrictive terms. Um, there's some question about its legal effect because the uh, executive order that Governor Abbott entered states that it supersedes any local orders um, to, this, to the extent that a local order restricts essential services allowed by this executive order. Um, so there's some question there about the interplay between state and local executive orders. And then finally, the order that Governor Abbott entered on May 1 expires by its terms on May 15, um, but it also provides that it may be amended, or rescinded, modified or superseded. And that's all, thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Bilyeu with a response and then Ms. Van Horn. Yeah, um, that was Mr. Hall, wasn't it? 
That was. Yes. Okay. Can you tell? Can you tell me exactly where you found the part about the social distancing in that order? Uh, and also, just so everybody understands, with regard to what Mr. Hall pointed out as the, the sort of um, differences between the, the local order and the state order, uh, the governor has also said that no localities can enforce the mask thing. They can't find people, or there there can be no punitive um, action taken against people who don't wear masks. Just just so you know. So even if local places require it, the governor says they can't enforce it. So Governor Abbott has. So, Governor Abbott has also said that it, it, it's his orders, not everybody else's orders. So this is going to get into potentially an issue in Texas. Um, but as far as we're concerned, it's Governor Abbott's orders. They're the ones that we, we need to really look the most closely at. Well, so Mr. Hall, can you identify where in that Governor Abbott's order, the mandatory shall language regarding uh, groups and social distancing is? Yes. Um, just a minute. It's at the top of page three. This is executive order GA-18 entered on April 27th. And it is the first sentence of the first full paragraph on page three. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Um, Mr. Hall, just to confirm, uh, if there is a conflict between a state order and a municipal order, um, what would be your advice to the national committee? Should we depend on which one will turn out to supersede or should we attempt to comply with both from a legal perspective? Well, the safest thing to do is always try to comply with both um, where that's not possible. And the question becomes which one has legal effect um, just by general principles of um, you know, the superiority of the law, it's going to be the, the governor's executive order uh, will supersede the local executive order, especially where the governor's order expressly states that it does that. Thank, does that you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Ms. Van Horn. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I've been in contact with the Region 3 chairs all morning communicating, and they've let me know their deadlines respectively for their states. Um, the Kentucky chair, Chris Weiss, also wants me to relay that um, they have filed, um, let's see, they have filed, hmm, they have, um, uh, they're appealing that travel ban and they expect an order next week and joining the order from the federal court. So they're, they've sued the Kentucky governor on that travel ban, just to let you guys know that. That's Kentucky that are under a travel ban restriction right now. Thank you, Ms. Van Horn. I have next Mr. Wendt um, on deck and then on deck. Uh, I don't think we'll be hearing members of the gallery uh, at this time, uh, Mr. Fishman. Um, so Ms. Mr. Wendt and then Mr. Hayes. Go ahead, Mr. Wendt. I believe uh, one of the things we really are looking at is risk averse. Uh, yes, we can say that the governor's orders supersede the uh, mayor's orders in Austin, but the question is, do we really want to put our, our party members into a position where they have to choose? And regardless of what happens, if they get arrested, our business is, un is going to be unable to be completed. So I think in, in the current situation, in the current landscape, no, I don't like complying with the government orders, but at the same time, the business of this party is is more paramount, and that's what must be completed. Mr. Hayes. So I think we've gone down some rabbit holes here. Um, the recommendation of the COC is, uh, and, and we're, t we're taking up uh, canceling the uh, contract under the impossibility clause, and I think what some people are arguing is whether or not we're, we go to Austin at all including postponed. And I'd like to say what we have been looking at and talking with uh, the JW Marriott about and, and the proposals that we've gotten back so far from the JW, or excuse me, the Austin Convention Center, um, it, it's that we're going to move our business and, and our event over into the Convention Center. The JW would act as a host hotel. And the, the space that's been presented is um, just for just for the business session is like 93,000 square feet. 
I believe that is more than adequate to put on a, a socially distanced safe convention for our members. So, so that's part of our plan that we are putting forward is we are looking at spaces where people are going to be able to observe social distancing and being safe while they are actually participating in the convention. And we've got a whole lot of other details that would go way beyond the scope of this call of how to, how to get there. So um, I, I think we've gotten lost in that respect. So uh, m m our position, as best I understand it, is we recommend a cancellation of the contract that exists for Memorial Weekend. But we also recommend a postponement, which could could theoretically still include um, Austin for July. Mr. Goldstein. You're muted, Sam. I want to go ahead and focus this a little bit further. So actually to put a motion on the table instead of just rambling around on a bunch of different stuff. So the Convention Oversight Committee makes the following motion. Due to the continuing impossibility of holding a 1,046 delegate convention in Austin, Texas from May 19th to May 26th, 2020, resulting from continuing government actions related to the COVID-19 pandemic, both in Texas and across the country, the Libertarian National Committee hereby directs the invocation of the impossibility clause terminating the contract between itself and the JW Marriott Austin without any further liability from either party. And that is moved by the Convention Oversight Committee. Um, I believe it doesn't need a second if it's moved out of the committee. Uh, is there any further discussion on the cancellation of um, the convention on the motion that Sam just read that would, that would invoke the impossibility clause in the contract with the Austin venue for the physical convention Memorial Day weekend? Is there any objection to this? Uh, there are two hands. Mr. Hands up. Sorry, uh, Mr. Richard Mr. Hansman and Ms. Bilyeu. Uh, Ms. Bilyeu, and then- Can we somehow get it on the screen? Or is it already somewhere that it's I'm It's on missing? the report, page one of the oh. report. Okay, that's fine. Uh, who else is raising hands? Mr. Bishop Henchman. Mr. Bishop Henchman. I have a question. Um, what was the vote on this recommendation out of the committee? Unanimous. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Dr. Lark and Mr. More Rick. specifically without objection. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was a consent. Dr. Lark. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure how we can, maybe there'll be no problem with this, but I actually would like to hear from Mr. Hall as to whether, what his opinion is about uh, whether or not the, uh, we, we are on firm legal ground in terms of our contractual arrangement uh, if we invoke the impossibility clause, what is his interpretation? And I don't know if he wants to give that to us in, in open session. I, I, I can tell you what it is, but I'll let Mr. Hall answer. Go ahead. Um, I, I think this is a classic case of an impossibility provision uh, taking effect. Um, it, it fits all the terms. We have government regulations that are making this impossible. We also have uh, what they call an act of God here, uh, for lack of a better word, a pandemic, I think, fits the bill. So I, I think we're on firm legal ground uh, on, on those two considerations alone, the government regulations and the existence of a pandemic making it impossible for the parties to perform. Um, further strengthening that case of impossibility is the fact that the hotel itself sent out the uh, cancellation of all the attendees' reservations and then sent a follow-up email. And I know this was done in consultation with um, some of our folks on the Convention Oversight Committee, but nonetheless, the follow-up email confirmed that the uh, existing reservations had been canceled and that the hotel's um, goal was to uh, reschedule and, and, and um, establish new dates uh, for, uh, to make new reservations. So for all of those reasons, I think we're on very firm ground here in invoking this clause. That said, these type of contractual situations are messy. That's why contracts are so long. They try to account for every conceivable um, 
uh, factor that may come into play that, that may be unforeseen at the time the contract is entered into, um, but that's exactly what this impossibility clause is supposed to provide for. No liability termination of the contract when some thing out of the party's control makes it impossible for one or both parties to perform. And I think that's a classic case of what we're looking at here. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Redpath. Uh, Dr. Lark asked my question. Okay. Um, is there need for further discussion regarding uh, the motion to cancel the existing convention as constituted in Austin at the JW Marriott on Memorial Day weekend? Um, if there's no objection to the motion, we can proceed to the next steps. Just a question, uh, Mr. Chairman. I do have a question. Mr. Redpath, yes. This applies only to a meeting at the JW Marriott, correct? It, it applies to a meeting at the JW Marriott on Memorial Day weekend. Memorial it, is Day. A, okay. Okay. it is an exercise of canceling. Um, Mr. Goldstein, can you read the motion out one more sure. time? Due to the continuing impossibility of holding a 1046 delegate convention in Austin, Texas from May 19th to May 26th, 2020, resulting from continuing government actions related to the COVID-19 pandemic, both in Texas and across the country, the Libertarian National Committee hereby directs the invoca invocation of the impossibility clause terminating the contract between itself and the JW Marriott Austin without any further liability by either party. All right, the motion's been read again. Is there any objection to this motion? Hearing no objection to the motion, the motion passes without objection. Now, I'd like to give us some direction because we have approximately an hour left um, and there's sort of an order of operations to these things. Uh, so right now what we have is we don't have the space or the contract to do the in-person convention on Memorial Day weekend in Austin. The LNC has the power under our bylaws to set the time and the place of the convention. At this point, the time and the place has been canceled. And so we are at that position of needing to set a new time and place because we are unable, it is impossible to proceed with the, the call that had been made before. The two primary options for that, as I understand them from the COC report are changing the call to a postponed convention, either different time, different place, different time, same place, uh, at least city-wise. Um, the other option that has been floated around is changing the call to an electronic convention, uh, saying the time and place to be virtual uh, with the standard objections that everybody's gone through, which we would have to deal with uh, the parliamentary questions. And then um, the third one is not calling another convention at all and leaving no convention with the LNC exercising what powers it can under the bylaws to adapt to that situation, to fill the vacancy in the ticket um, and to do some sort of staggered resignations to change LNC members if they didn't want to serve. Mr. Phillips. Uh, uh, just as a point uh, that was brought up in the chat is, is that uh, apparently the Utah delegation is informing us that uh, Utah law requires political parties to accommodate re remote participation. Okay, um, that's interesting. Uh, and we may get to a point where that's going to be important. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, do you have a question before uh, we start going? Mr. O'Donnell? His dog was making the comment. Question uh, and a concern We can't understand you, Justin. Justin, your connection is bad. You may want to type it. Mr. O'Donnell, we could not hear you. Um, Mr. Goldstein and then Ms. Adams. Yeah, for expediency. 
turn Mr. Goldstein, Mr. Goldstein, Mr. Mr. O'Donnell, your your connection is insufficient. We're shifting to Mr. Goldstein. For expediency sake, Mr. Chair, I'd like to do a quick, if I would like to propose a quick straw poll of the LNC to see if there is a, uh, a great overwhelming uh, show of support for one of those three options. Because if there isn't, then if there's no support at all for one of the options, I, I don't think we should waste much time on it at this point. Um, point of order, straw polls are, are technically out of order. I, I'm I'm aware. I, I I was more thinking about whether or not it made sense. Um, well, the COC has another motion in its report. I, I know. If there's a report of the COC, I, I, if we offer well, that motion, then I, substitutes Dawn, can be offered. I I understand that. Um, I believe the next. I'm just trying to, to. I move to suspend the rules uh, to take a straw poll. Um, Jack. Um, all kinds of people are jumping in, and I've had my hand raised as well. I. Okay. My hands up. Also. I, I have I, the I'm, order I'm well speaking as Matson Redpath Harlos. Oh, all right. Hands raised in order. Here's here's the issue. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make this a little clearer. Mr. Fishman is sending me the names of the people on deck. I'm aware of them. And I apologize, further up the list, Adams is ahead of all three. And, and if you interrupt me verbally while I'm trying to recognize people, it slows this down. What I was attempting to do, um, so Mr. Goldstein was the next person I recognized. He asked for a straw poll. I am aware that those are out of order. I was taking a moment to consider whether or not I thought it would help because the order of the convention oversight committee's recommendations will probably indicate the support for the proposals. And I think it's appropriate to let this, the committee that's making the report make their recommendation to the larger committee rather than short circuiting it. Right. I believe the committee should have the opportunity, even if their recommendation is not popular, they are the ones who did the work. Um, so I believe Ms. Adams was next. And then I have Ms. Matson, Mr. Redpath, and Ms. Harlos. Ms. Yeah, Adams. I just wanted to go on our record. The, the last option, ca completely canceling and the LNC simply appointing filling a vacancy was not what I understood our position on the committee to be. I understood our position on the committee to be that we did not support complete and total cancellation. You they don't. Came, okay, I it, just, I, I wanna make that very clear for absolutely. people watching because that's who it came across, how it came across. And I also wanna make clear that none of the committee's options rule out any coming together or meshing of any of these ideas by the LNC or by this larger body. Right. All right. Um, was that it, Ms. Adams, or did you have a? Okay. Uh, then Ms. Matson, you're next, and then, sorry, Ms. Matson, then Redpath and Harless. Redpath and Harless. Ms. Matson, go ahead. At this time, I'm going to make the, the second motion in the CLC report, which is to postpone the 2020 convention to an alter alternate date and/or location to be chosen by the LNC on behalf I, of the committee. I, Ms. Matson, does that motion specify the alternate date? It does not. It says it will be chosen by the LNC. Okay. Are, so are you making the motion in the form of a blank? No. Are you making the motion for the LNC to choose at a time certain? We can establish a time frame if we like, but um, th this is a motion that we're going to postpone it to a future date. And that uh, decided. And if you if you want me to go ahead and proceed to some level of debate on it. No, no, I, I want you to make the motion in a way. I, I want to understand what the motion is because if it's a motion that's going to put in a blank that can be filled. Nope. But that would be different from if it's a motion to say that the LNC will make a choice 
which would be different from saying when the LNC would make their choice. So the motion, re please reread it. It's just like it is in the convention committee report. Let me get that screen back. There we go. Um, it's a motion to postpone the 2020 convention to an alternate date and or location to be chosen by the LNC. Okay. Um, it's moved by the committee. It doesn't need a second. Would you like to speak to it? Um, yeah, we, we've been actively pursuing uh, potential alternate bids. We think we can, um, we've had some interesting ones come in. We think we could do this in relatively short order. Um, and while we may not have a final one yet to recommend, we, we think it is possible. And what this does is make it clear we're not meeting on that weekend. Um, we are going to uh, pursue an in-person convention at a later date, and um, you know, the CSC needs a little bit of time to come up with the you know the formal specifics of which one. We do intend to do that um, on short order and bring it back to the LNC promptly to to authorize whatever the backup option is. Okay. Um, Mr. Redpath. And then I have Harlos and Goldstein after. Mr. Redpath, go ahead. I believe Mr. Redpath has exited the building. Really? Uh, I'm sure he's coming back, but I don't see him in the participant link. Okay. Uh, then Ms. Harlos and we'll come back, or was it Ms. Harlos and then Mr. Goldstein and then we'll come back to Mr. Redpath if he reconnects. Thank you. I was actually going to make the motion if Ms. Matson didn't make that motion. I am in fully support of the convention committee's decision. We have appointed the convention committee to handle this. This is their recommendation. And um, I, there's been a lot of talk over the past couple of years about the LNC not micromanaging um, our committees. But besides that, I do think they have made the right decision that is in accordance with our bylaws. Uh, the delegates at such a postponed convention can choose at that time to allow some sort of remote um, participation, as has been suggested in chat multiple times, but I would say that it is not an impossibility. The fact that they have locations willing to take us um, puts paid to the idea that it is existentially impossible to have a convention. It is might be impossible to have it at the current location due to space limitations, but it is not impossible. And this body has zero right to try to find an end run around our bylaws, which is the um, contract we have with the members when there is not an impossibility. Bylaws are not the pirate's code. They are not guidelines. They are not only bylaws when we like them. They are, in fact, our bylaws. I got on this body in order to, uh, to honor the bylaws, and I believe that is the duty of every single member here. No one would be able to trust us again if we did not. And I suggest that everyone here, when they hear the word bylaws, substitute in the word constitution. And when they hear the word LNC, substitute in the word U.S. government and see if that passes the smell test. We will be a bunch of hypocrites if we do not honor our own governing documents, yet complain when the federal government does it. We will have just proven the case that libertarian are incapable of tasting their own wares. Mr. Goldstein, then Mr. Bishop Henchman, then Ms. Adams, then Ms. Van Horn. Okay, I move to uh, amend the motion to strike the words, uh, let me take this out, to an alter. Here's what I wanted to say. We move to postpone the 2020 convention to an alternate physical location and a date no later than July to commence at a date no later than July 15th to be chosen by the LNC. Does that make sense? It, it is clear. A um, second. A sec who's the second? Ms. Matson. Yes. Okay. Um, is there, do you need Please. to speak to the amendment, Mr. Goldstein? 
Please restate. Uh, okay, it's to here. The wording should be something like, uh, "We move to postpone the 2020 convention to a date to a commencement date no later than July 15th, 2020, and to an alternate physical location to be chosen by the LNC." Thank you. You okay with that, Alicia? Yes. Ms. Manson? Okay. All right. Um, uh, is there someone who would like to speak against the amendment? Do I get to speak uh, in favor of it? Uh, I thought you just did. Oh, no, you were restating. You, right. I was asking you to, to speak to it, so please do. I, I just think that this is, in a nutshell, what the COC has been working on intensively for the past couple of weeks. We do have, and that could be revealed in an executive session, a couple of very juicy bids that would actually probably, in the end run, save the uh, party money with the deals that we're getting from a couple of these venues. And they are very doable as far as social distancing. As Daniel said, uh, they're like over 80 or 90,000 square feet that we could space people out way far apart in addition to other uh, prophylactic measures. And I just think that through my reading of the great number of delegates to this convention is that most of them want to and will attend a physical in-person convention this year. All right. Um is there anyone who would like to speak against the amendment? Mr. Chairman, I have some information that might be relevant. I, I, is there anyone who would like to speak against the amendment? Yes, Bill Redpath would. Mr. Redpath? Okay, thank you. Um, I uh, stand in opposition. First of all, I want to thank the COC for all their work here. Uh, obviously, a lot of hard work. I'm a former member of that committee from prior convention. That there's a lot of work there, and I want to thank all of them for sure. Also want to thank Bob Johnston, uh, who came up with ballot access uh, data. Uh, I would like to make one change. Virginia's 5,000 net sick, not 10,000. Uh, he, he's invaluable in that and services everyone on the ballot access. I think, it's, I think it's important to take stock of what is really important to the Libertarian Party in 2020. Uh, the most important thing, far and away, is the selection of a presidential ticket and giving them time, as much time as possible, to campaign. Uh, I think the second most important thing is the selection of the Libertarian National Committee. Uh, I think the third most important thing is the selection of the Judicial Committee. Um, there, if we postpone this convention from Memorial Day weekend to Fourth of July weekend, that shrinks the presidential ticket campaign time by one quarter. One quarter gone, uh, gone forever. Um, if we then if we go to July 19th uh, to nominate the presidential ticket, and I know July 15th was stated, but it could be the following weekend. But if we go to July 19th, we would slice one third of the time for the presidential ticket to campaign. The most important thing every four years in the Libertarian Party, in, in my opinion, that is that that's bad to do that. Um, also, it's going to adversely affect ballot access, uh, or could. We are facing a couple of June deadlines uh, in Georgia and New Hampshire to uh, submit our candidates. While those are probably unconstitutional, we would probably have to litigate in those states. And the attorneys are really busy. It's bad enough right now. We, have, we still have 14 states to go uh, to get our presidential ticket on the ballot. And the attorneys are going to be very busy. We may have to litigate in all of them for all I know, which would place even more work on their desk right now. I assure you that Oliver Hall these days is not watching Turner Classic Mr. movies every afternoon. Mr. Uh, but, Scott, yes. Please focus on the amendment. Okay. Well, yes. Uh, the what's the chance? What is the chance of the uh, twenty percent? Uh, I'd say the twenty percent tops chance that we can meet in person in July anyway. Uh, the convention is not free. Obviously, people have talked about health issues, how many people are going to attend, what will the ramifications be? Uh, Portland uh, Portland uh, in 2006 was poorly attended. We had a, uh, we came out with a platform that was frankly an embarrassment in my opinion to the Libertarian Party for the next few years. So I think there are a, a lot of good reasons. Cost, health, I, I think I've stated everything that, that has come to mind uh, for reasons that I, I think it is, it, it is a poor decision to postpone this convention for six to eight weeks just to meet in person. I think it would be better to do this electronically and remotely and to do it as soon as possible to give our presidential ticket uh, as much time as possible to campaign this year. Thank you. 
All right. Um, I have on the amendment seeking to be recognized Mr. Bishop Henchman, Dr. Lark, Ms. Bilyeu, and Ms. Matson. Mr. Bishop Henchman. Uh, I think the motion is not specific enough. I actually think it's out of order. And uh, well, I think the amendment and the amendment just doesn't perfect that problem. Um, the motion is stated uh, even as amended. Um, it's, it's, it's a phantom. It doesn't have a win and win is absolutely important. I don't know how anybody could consider voting for this motion without the win in it. And then, you know, the where is relevant to some extent because some places are, are recovering and some places are getting worse. Um, and, you know, I've been, so I, you know, I scrolled back. I think uh, my first conversation with Mr. Hayes about contingency plans was on March 6th. So we've been, you know, working for quite some time on this. And I'm, and I'm frankly concerned about the lack of detail and specificity in this motion as even with the amendment. Um, you know, I think all of the members of the COC or even most, at least most of them acknowledge that there is high risk that July cannot happen um, or at least some risk. Um, and, you know, so I've heard from a lot of them that, you know, let's get to a certain point and if, if we all, you know, at that point, if the in-person convention is not possible, then we'll go to other options. That's not in this motion. Um, and something I've, I've tried to emphasize to a lot of people I've talked to is this needs to have, if we're going to postpone, it needs to have a date where we call it off because it's just not going to happen and objective criteria that we can all look at to know that it can't happen. So, I, you know, this motion isn't there. This motion is full of blanks. You know, whenever I've been on a lot of committees with Ms. Matson, and whenever I make a motion to postpone, she dutifully chimes in and says, to what definite, to, to win. Right. And uh, to what's the definite? Because it's either an in, a definite postponement or an in, indefinite postponement. So, uh, you know, I, I hope we can fill out the blanks here because this is a phantom motion so, and the amendment doesn't get there either. Um, to the extent that there was in there a little bit of a question of whether or not it's in order, I, I, I recognize the vagaries, but it is, I'm gonna rule that it's in order. Um, and I think that it would be better to let it rise or fall on its merits than get into the parliamentary discussion, but I'm happy to do it if anybody wants. It was um, an observation, not a motion. Okay. I recognize the value of the debate on this. Uh, then I'm going to move to Dr. Lark, then Ms. Bilyeu, then Ms. Matson, And with the indulgence of the body, I'm going to step away. So Mr. Merced has the gavel. Um, should I not be back right away? Go ahead, Dr. Lark. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to make sure that the word alternate uh, allows also for the possibility of Austin, Texas. Uh, alternate in this case does not mean a different place. Is that correct, Mr. Goldstein and Ms. Ms. Madison? Yes, Dr. Lark, that is correct. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Madison? Uh, it was my turn. Yep. Uh, yeah, Ms. Bilyeu is before me, I believe. Oh and yeah, then... Bilyeu, sorry, sorry. My, my apologies. Yeah, and my point was uh, similar to Dr. Lark's. I, I want to make sure that that word, does al that word alternative does not preclude us from even using the original facility that we had planned for, should that wind up being an option one way or the other. So I just wanted to have that clarified that that putting the word alternate or alternative location that we still have the option to use both the city and the facility that was originally um, on, on, on deck. So that was my intent in making and it. Mr. Fishman, can you make sure Mr. Hayes is um, on deck if the body will allow it? Yep, I have, um, I have Matson, then Harlos, then Hayes, then Van Horn, then Phillips. Oh, Adams, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so first let's talk about terminology. Um, Mr. Bishop Henchman um, mentioned that I'm, I'm kind of a stickler for definite or indefinite po postponement. Well, th that's when you're, you take a pending motion and you postpone the motion to a future time. And that's, that's not what we're doing here. And definite versus indefinite just means we're postponing to a hard date or you know, we're punting this completely, taking the question off the table. That's not what, what we're, what this motion is doing. Um, it says the event itself will not happen on the date 
that was originally planned, the Memorial Day weekend. The event itself will happen at a later date. And um, certainly that will be definite once we got hard, harder details on proposals. Um, we've had joint uh, had a joint meeting with the ballot access committee, we being the convention oversight committee. And um, you know, I, I thought well, we came out of that with, uh, with an understanding that we could postpone to around July 4th would be okay. And every weekend you go after that gets a little more uncomfortable and screaming will begin in mid July. Um, so uh, also New Hampshire was mentioned as a potential ballot access issue. And what we discussed with that is Apparently in, in New Hampshire, the deadline in June is not for us to uh, designate the final candidate, but anyone who wishes to be in the running to be the candidate just needs to file paperwork in New Hampshire by June 12th and pay I don't know, a couple hundred dollar filing fee for that. So every candidate for the presidential nomination could go ahead and do that. The party could designate its, its official nominee after that, and that July 12th uh, deadline can be handled that way. I'm, I'm sorry, June 12th, not July 12th. Um, it is very important for this body to take action to say we are postponing the event. Currently, we have canceled the contract. We just voted to cancel the contract, but we've still basically called the convention on a certain date. So if we wanna prevent a rump convention just getting together in a backyard, in Austin or in the parking lot or whatever, we have to make it very clear, we are punting that date. We are not using that date. There will be no official action on that date. And we need to officially say we're postponing, not using the original date uh, so that hanky panky can't ensue. Um, so it's very critical that we pass a motion saying we are postponing. And my preference for this option over the others is uh, based on a balance of risks. You've got all kinds of you know, risks here, um, regardless of you know, risks of virus, just legal considerations, ballot access considerations, financial considerations to the party as a whole, which the LNC is charged with uh, monitoring our assets. Uh, press coverage, I think our our best option is uh, for press coverage is to have an in-person meeting. I think if we, you know, any attempt to do some kind of online thing is going to require a bylaw amendment, which means somebody's got to get them together in person. And if you have this rump convention, and I know, I know that's not the right word, but the chances of things going awry are very high or somebody taking advantage. Um, so there's a lot of risk there. Uh, ballot access considerations in early July, uh, some tighter timelines, but workable. Are we still on the amendment, Ms. Matson? Um, it's, so we're postponing to, so the amendment is postponed to a, to a yeah. uh, physical location. So I'm, I'm speaking in favor of the physical location. Okay, uh, all right. I, I would and like- I, And I'll wrap up in, in the next 30 seconds. Um, and I, you know, in July, I do believe that many of our restrictions are going to be greatly eased and any kind of online thing as opposed to a physical location, you know, we're talking about potential legal challenges. We never tried the process before. If we get ourselves into some rule that that doesn't work because we've never done it that way before, we can get stuck, we can get legal challenges to the way our presidential candidate was nominated. So physical location, in-person meeting, I, to me, minimizes legal risk, um, ballot access consideration risk, financial risk to the party of, do we get a fundraising gala? Do we get, do we get, uh, do we have to refund tens of thousands of dollars and go in the hole because we're not having a physical meeting, so. I'm in favor of the in-person physical location. Okay. Um, just as a matter of where we're at, we have an amendment to change Ms. Matson's original motion to one that specifies a July 15th um, date. 
Is there any need for further discussion on that amendment? No him? later than July 15th. No later than I, July 15th. Is there I've had information without opinion relative to that that would clarify some things for everybody. I, is, is it necessary before we move to a vote on the amendment, Mr. Hayes? It would certainly affect people's perception of what was going on with giving them the full information. I, of reality, of what exists. What? What I would like to do is I would like to proceed to a vote on the amendment and see if there's any objection to amending the motion. And then we would recognize Mr. Hayes without objection to talk about some of the specific. Mr. Hayes, go ahead. So I'm just, I'm just going go to say it. Go so ahead. All, everything we have that, that starts before Ju July 15th would actually end by July 12th, if that made sense. So, so it would yep. start sooner than that, like the, the, the eighth and ends on the 12th. So 15th is even way farther than, than, than okay. what we actually have on the table. Got it. Okay. It was, was that the important piece of information? Thank you. I think you. so. That might affect some people. All right. Um, so Ms. Are we ready to, is there any objection to this amendment being added to the motion? Yes, I object. Yes. Okay, um, so there's objection. Good, got it. Are we prepared to proceed to a vote on the amendment? I have a point of parliamentary order, Mr. Chair. Parliamentary, go ahead. Ms. Van Horn has been seeking to be recognized to speak forever, and she on keeps the getting passed or the over. Underlying motion. On the amendment, I believe she keeps complaining and getting ignored. Uh, Ms. Adams. Okay, so I part of the, the issue is it's difficult to see everybody. Um, Ms. Van Horn, we'll go to Ms. Van Horn, then we'll go to Ms. Adams. Thank you for the reminders. Ms. Van Horn, go ahead. Thank you, Karen Ann. I was recognized by you, Mr. Chair, in the lineup, and then I got lost somehow. Um, without a date, I can't vote in favor of this motion. We need to have something more than just say, let's postponing it. Someone wrote kicking it down the road, kicking it down the can. That's exactly what it is. And I'm in direct contact with the chairs from region three and they're saying that they would like a date before we just say we're gonna postpone. Okay, um, Ms. Adams. Yes, yeah, so as a member of the committee and we've discussed this at length, I'm absolutely in favor of postponement and it, and I'm only an alternate, so I know I can't move to amend this, but I would have liked to see the amendment include language that specifies more uh, what a potential plan might be if we get to that date and cannot proceed. Something like at that time, um, a POTUS selection will be selected using whatever method and a physical convention can be convened at no later than such and such date, something like that. All right. Um, I have Mr. Phillips, Mr. Hewitt, Mr. Hagen, Mr. Nana, Mr. O'Donnell, and Mr. Went. Mr. Phillips. Mine's actually related now after a point's been made. I, I'm waiting for the main motion. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, is there anyone else that wants to speak on the amendment? Can yes. we move? I, no, I would like to speak. This is Hewitt. On the amendment. Yes, on the amendment. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. And the reason, the reason why it doesn't have to be a drop dead date right now. And let me add that this committee, I'm on 30 different government committees right now. If I had any of those committees with the dedication and the ability and the ability to flex and move as the co uh, convention oversight committee, is this the best committee I've ever seen? And they have worked their tail off and they've been hit by a pandemic. They've been pushed down the road and everything else. And they're working harder than any of us have ever worked. I have full confidence in this committee. Now, when we give a date, I'd like to see that date go to the end of August. But I am willing to go ahead and compromise and say, if we get something and if uh, the chair, Daniel, says most of our uh, proposals are going to be done by the 12th, then we say Anything that's done by the 12th, that's fine. We don't have to set it exactly that date because this is always changing, just like the pandemic's changing. So I would say that this is a perfect amendment. 
if Ms. Adams wants something in there that's put in addition to say, if this doesn't happen by this date, then we move to that electronic uh, convention. I, I can I can live with that. Okay. I, I have Hagen, Nana, O'Donnell, and Went. Um, I'm going to assume they're on the amendment, but if they're not, uh, we'll go to them and we'll know that. And then, and then Harlos after when she as a co-host has the ability to raise her hand electronically. Okay, M Mr. Hagen. Actually, I was going to call the question on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Hagen. Is there any objection to ending debate on the amendment? Hearing no objection, um, we will proceed to a vote on the amendment. Please restate what we're voting on. Yeah, I'm getting there. Mr. Goldstein, can you restate your amendment? Does Ms. Harless have it in writing? She was typing, I think, as, uh, as I was talking. That's fine. Um, I have it as the language that is in the um, convention committee's report, but with appended that um, the date selected will be no later than July 15th, 2020. Okay, no, and to a physical location. Okay, thank you. Mr. O'Donnell objected to the ending of debate, um, though I did not hear it. Mr. O'Donnell, if you could, Mr. O'Donnell, if you could just quickly be recognized. Mr. O'Donnell. His picture appears not to be moving. I wonder if he's frozen. I concur with Mr. Phillips analysis. Can you type right. in the chat maybe? What we're going to do is we're going to proceed to a vote on the amendment. Um, Ms. Harlos will take this vote by roll call. Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. You ready? Uh, wait, just a second. Mr. O'Donnell, if you can state your point of debate in the chat, I will recognize that. But if not, we're going to proceed to a vote on this amendment. All right. Um, can somebody tell me what Mr. O'Donnell's point is? Because having him type in the chat that he said it doesn't say anything. I never saw it. Me neither. It's in the Q&A area. What the hell is the Q&A area? It's a future of a webinar. There's a Q&A area down on the bottom bar. The only I thing I'm seeing here I, from Justin, sorry. I don't see it in the Q and A either. You know, the yeah, only I, thing I see Justin, I was, is a question Justin. from Jennifer Luoma. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. what the point that's he's right. trying to make. Pros and cons. Uh, that's the only thing that I see in the Q and A area. That that was. We are proceeding to a vote now. Ms. Harlos, please go ahead and call the roll. Um. Thank you, Ms. Billu. <laughs> yes. Mr. Bishop Henchman. No. Mr. Goldstein. Yes. Mr. Hagen. Yes. I will vote yes. Mr. Hewitt. Yes. Dr. Lark. Aye. Mr. Longstreth. Yes. Ms. Matson. Yes. Mr. Merced. Aye. Yes. Mr. Nikayla. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. I will skip. Oh, he put. No. He says no. Mr. Phillips. Abstain. Mr. Redpath? No. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Van Horn? You muted, Elizabeth. I, uh, yeah, I vote yes. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve yeses, three noes, one abstention. I will not vote the Amendment is adopted. Um, we will now proceed to Mr. Phillips and then uh, Mr. Fishman, if you can just tell me who, who is on deck on the underlying motion. I will allow debate on this for probably another, not very long, um, because basically what's happening is some filibustering and it's 
I have Phillips Longstreth Harlos. Phillips Longstreth Harlos. Mr. Phillips, go ahead. Uh, a couple things real quick. Uh, first, I agree with Mr. Redpath on his objections. Um, I also agree with the Convention Committee on postponing. Uh, so, um, and I have discussed this with other people. I agree with Ms. Adams that the, uh, that the motion needs to contain some language that has a option that says, okay, we're gonna do this. And if we don't do this, here's our next option. Um, but it, as it stands right now, I, in, while in theory, I don't object to postponement, I object to this motion at this time because we have not discussed other options, including hybrid options that may uh, have, be better for other people. So we have not discussed the other options in order to weigh them against this one. Mr. Longstreth. I would echo what Mr. Phillips said there. I also want to share uh, what Region 1, uh, I met with them uh, two days ago uh, with the state chairs. I've also been running public opinion polls. Uh, the results of the public opinion polls for uh, Region 1, there were two polls. In the first one, only 17% of respondents favored postponement. In the second one, 34% favored postponement. But that is a public opinion poll, take it as you will, and it was targeted at Region 1. Uh, of my state chairs, 56% uh, favored postponement. However, 100% favored the idea of uh, electronic balloting. And so I would urge this committee to keep those uh, in mind. The other thing that I want to talk about on postponement, um, is that we need to remember that we had several people uh, come on uh, during public comment to talk about uh, health concerns. If we postpone, we are instantly shoving those health concerns aside. And I understand that there are delegates uh, and there are delegate alternates for a reason. Uh, however, it is a consideration that this uh, committee needs to, to think about. Um, and I think the most important argument that's been made is giving our candidates the opportunity uh, to begin fundraising and networking and doing what they need to in order to get their campaign uh, going. Uh, and so for that reason, I, I don't believe Leave, even though the majority of my state chairs did say that postponement would be okay, I do not believe that I can vote for a postponement because there are bound to be yeah. better options that we can discuss. All right. I have Ms. Harlos, Mr. Went, uh, yeah. without objection, Mr. Molman, and then Mr. Smith. Ms. Harlos, if you could please reread the motion as amended. Um, someone in the gallery asked. Okay, one second. I have to get out. Ms. Matson, do you have that handy? Because you have the convention committee report. I have my voting. Oh, the amended one. Yeah, the the amendment though was to um, was just to add the phrase to a physical uh, decision to a physical location no later than July fifteenth, twenty twenty. Okay, but it's to give the LNC the to have the LNC postpone it. Correct. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Harlos. Okay, I'd like to address the arguments that were made about the health concerns. Every convention, there are concerns that people have. Are we privileging now health concerns over the financial concerns we hear every single year from povertarians? Because it now affects the more wealthy among us. There are always people who cannot attend, always people who have concerns. Our bylaws anticipate that by having alternates. I have no doubt that we're going to have a full convention considering our candidates and the situation with Mr. Um, Trump. If people wanted to discuss other options, every member here had the opportunity to offer a substitute motion. What is- I muted Mr. O'Donnell who- Okay, thank you. The committee had an opportunity, any member of this committee had an opportunity to offer a substitute a motion motion. So I'm sorry, I do not find that kind of objection particularly well-founded. It does- um, I'm just waiting till it. Thank you. So that just seems again to be um, a, a, a stalling, a stalling ta uh, tactic. We, Speaking of which, well, I don't think I am saying anything that I didn't say. I have said before. This is all new things. I did not deal with the health conditions before. We also have very much financial concerns that have not been adequately raised. Ms. Matson did raise them for the amount that she could without seeming like she was hogging the mic, but nobody else really has. Look at our balance sheet. We are risking bankrupting this party. I know some people do not agree with that assessment, but I absolutely see that assessment. And this is so freaking ir sorry, so irresponsible. We have bylaws. We have our financial considerations. There is no reason we cannot make a decision now. People wanted to consider other options. They should have made a substitute motion. Mr. Went. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I wanted to briefly go over the fact that our bylaws do have other options and I'm not in support of this motion because our bylaws say that we must have hold a convention until August 31st of 2020. Uh, so that is an option and the further we look out and the fur th further we um, uh, look to try and give us more options and uh, more time for the virus to subside, it may ease the concerns of some of our um, some of our members who would not be willing even in July to attend a convention. Um, and with that said, I don't have the ability to motion or anything, but I believe August 21st is the optimal time because it would place us in between the Democratic convention and the Republican convention. So the news cycles would be there. Mr. Molman without objection and then Mr. Smith. Hi. Um so mentioned was the august 2020 deadline you know we we specifically chose the july date for a number of reasons not the least of which is that if we are unable to execute in july then we are not going to be able to execute and and the the conversations around alternatives at that point we would be much more free to explore those as it would literally become impossible to hold another convention to plan it to execute it with less than two months time far less than two months time. And so um, that is something to consider. Uh, Mr. Fishman has in the past said that it would take approximately six weeks to set up uh, online balloting and, and get that sort of procedure set up. Um, I think that uh, something that Mr. Henchman had mentioned, uh, Bishop Henchman had mentioned earlier uh, that uh, taking the, the, the um, having some sort of cutoff date, uh, the LNC is free to do that at any time, just like they did today. We have done so take an action before the convention. And so I think it would be important that the LNC have some guideline. I don't know that it needs to be in a motion, but it would be a, a good idea to reassess. Um, considerations for health, I do think are important. I don't know if this body can address them. Uh, candidate fundraising, we heard from Mr. Kokesh earlier. He, he would like to postpone. The one thing I think is missing more than anything, I, I keep seeing polls of state chairs, polls of executive committees. Nobody's actually polled the delegates. Nobody's actually pulled the alternates. And there's this big question about who's going to show up. Now, I've talked to Mr. delegates. Moulton? I've talked to alternates. Yes, sir. Please wrap up. Okay. So my point is, is that without that information, I'm not sure that going any other direction is knowledgeable. I would say that it may be beneficial for executive session uh, to actually consider the options. All right. I'm done. I'm going to recognize Mr. Smith and then Mr. Redpath. And then Mr. Hewitt, I, uh, all right, stop. Y'all need to stop. You burned up all but 20 minutes of this meeting on one motion and you're filibustering and it needs to stop. Mr. Smith, Mr. Redpath, Mr. Hewitt. Who's he talking to? Mr. Smith, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to speak in favor of this motion. I think that the time, the length of time gives us enough opportunity to really look into an online convention. Should that have to be the nuclear option for us? I think there's too many questions currently in the bylaws, uh, per, the bylaws committee proposal that was put forward. I think, you know, security issues, uh, motions from the floor, uh, discussion being su shut down, all that stuff is really bad for our delegates. So this gives us time to actually get some of those systems into play and lock them down and also still gives us the opportunity to have an in-person convention. So I just want to speak in favor of the motion. I think it's a good idea and, and I hope uh, my colleagues will vote yes for it. All right. Um, I believe I had Mr. Hewitt and Redpath or was it Redpath and Hewitt? Uh, I think it was Redpath and Hewitt. Uh, but Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Redpath. My, my, my Wi-Fi crashed out for about five minutes, uh, and I think I might have missed the uh, original uh, motion here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, so I'm a little confused. Could we please state the motion as amended again, please? If someone has it in front of them, please do. Ms. Harlos, do you have it? I was muted. I was reading it. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, we move to postpone the 2020 convention to an alternate physical location 
and a date no later to commence no later than July 15th, 2020, the location and date to be chosen by the LNC. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mr. Hewitt. Jeff, you're muted. Sorry, sorry, yeah, a little bit slow there. It's, uh, I'm, I've already started drinking because it's past noon back on the East Coast. So anyway, look, at, here's what I'm saying. This is a great, great compromise because if you add everything up, if you add all of the different health concerns and everything else, on Tuesday in Riverside County, we'll be actually voting to get rid of most of the uh, restrictions. That's in California. And there's a lot of things that are gonna be changing. I think that gives us time. There's a real good chance that one of these venues will be perfect. We'll have social distancing, masks and everything else for all those with concerns for their health. But I think to, sh to have in person, it gives an opportunity for people like the Kokeshes and the Vers and the Hornburgers and everyone else to do it in person and show what they really have. Plus the media draw is gonna be amazing. I firmly believe that we could have the largest in-person uh, convention ever there's the other look at the other parties they're doing uh, they're, they're pushing fear everything else they might even they're push their uh, conventions back this is a time for us to step up boldly we are the party that says you can't tell us not to smoke in a private you know and we've allowed the government to come in and and shut down everything this is the worst this is the worst abridgment of our liberties ever i used to think i wasn't libertarian enough Hell, this has made me the most libertarian person in the world. And I think we have to go back to what we stand for as a party. This is a great, great compromise. And by the way, a PS, when Karen Ann Harlos and Alicia Madison agree on anything, run with it, okay? Run with it. Mr. Matt, or Ms. Matson, sorry. Um, so first, I, I think I need to say that I, strongly disagree with the characterization that people are filibustering. I think that misstates people's motives. Nobody's talking in circles and we can, up, Ms. We, we can extend time if we need to. Okay. Um, and uh, more substantively, um, the COC would be open if you know people have objection to this because there's not a hard time frame. Well, the COC will be open to you setting a date for us to come back. We want to do that as soon as possible, every bit as much as you do, and it's our intention to. But if you're not sure we're going to, then, you know, say we'll report back by, you know, a certain reasonable date. We're, we're open to that. Uh, but let's not, you know, kill a good idea just, just on that concern because we're open to a deadline if you need one. But we're going to do it as fast as we can. Mr. Phillips. Um, I actually was going to move that amendment that we that we set a deadline on on picking a date and time, uh, say ten days from today. I was moved to make that amendment. Second. Moved and seconded. Go ahead, Mr. Phillips. That's, that's it. I, I move that we make that amendment that we set a deadline to have that so that we can have an answer for us and for everybody else in a in a reasonable time frame. So what you're moving is you're moving the original amendment, which is to postpone the physical convention to a time prior to July 15th with the LNC to make the decision by 10 days from today which would be May 12th. Correct. Point of inquiry, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Ms. Harlos. Would Mr. Phillips then be also moving for another electronic meeting since there's a 10 day notice requirement for 10 days from today? I would, uh, I have a, I would have followed this up with that, yes. Is that part of your amendment or? I was. I thought it would have to be a separate motion. If it can be part of the amendment, then yes. I second the amendment. If nobody else has already. No, it's been I, seconded. Okay. So. Yeah. Is there anyone who'd like to speak to the amendment? Mr. Ford. Yeah. Um, Mr. Can't, can't hear you. 
So he's going to play with Pat. Turn off your video, Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, your connection is insufficient. Can you hear me now? Turn off your video, Pat. All right, now try. All right, how is that now? Much better. Okay, thank you very much, folks, for your indulgences. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell has, has seated the chair to me for the time being. His, his technical problems. Um, he's asked me to state, and I, I asked the indulgence if we could recognize Mr. Perry, uh, Daryl Perry, to speak to the ballot difficulties that new faces if, in fact, they do not apply out ballot with a specific candidate by the Y11. The potential to repeat situation where you have multiple libertarian presidential candidates on the ballot could in its own way or damage the gain and reputation we've had by being on 50 states and by potential for a national candidate. Mm -hmm. So that is a serious issue to consider. I also mentioned that in my polling of state chairs myself this morning, everyone is in favor of an early, early delegate in-person convention. Uh, if there's not objection, uh, Mr. Ford's asked to hear from Mr. Perry. I have an objection. Okay. Um, well, I, if, if I can elaborate, Mr. Chairman, uh, without having Mr. Perry come on, um, again, do we want to have a state where we have two or more presidential candidates on the ballot. All right, um, thank you for raising that concern. Is there anyone else who wants to speak to this amendment? We have Molman and uh, Bishop Henchman. I'm gonna recognize Mr. Bishop Henchman because he's on the committee. Uh, I'll, I'll vote for Mr. Phillips amendment, but um, you know, as I mentioned, I started asking for contingency plans on March 6th. I thought we would have it at this meeting. I wanted to have this meeting on April 20th. I think the delegates need certainty. I think the party members need certainty. And we just keep seem to be kicking the can down the road. Um, so, you know, if this motion passes, I hope 10 days from now, it's all ready to go with everything in it. And I know Ms. Harlow said, you know, I could have offered something, blah, 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 blah. We, we have, I didn't mean that uh, meanly, but um, we have offered stuff and, and honestly, and, and I've made, I don't know, I don't know how many offers to the convention committee to help them in their work. Um, but the response was always, we have it in hand. You will get everything on May 2nd. We will be ready to go. We're not ready to go. I think this motion's out of order. I think Mr. Phillips amendment makes, you know, gives them time to get it in order but uh, we're not there yet. I, I am, Ms. Harlos, if it's, uh, have you not spoken on the amendment? You're still mm -hmm. muted. I have not spoken on the amendment. Go ahead. Um, and first, Mr. Bishop Henchman, I did not take any uh, offense. I'm much more colorful than you are most of the time. <laughs> um, this is not kicking the can down the road. This is giving the convention, the convention committee uh, time to present to us the best option and to finalize some options. This is just responsible planning and 10 days is the minimum to a um, electronic meeting. So this is actually um, quite uh, rapid. Um, I, I would also object to saying something is out of order when the chair has ruled that it's not out of order. I, I think that's a mischaracterization. Um, is there any objection to hearing from Mr. Hayes? Mr. Molman, you've already spoken unless this is something completely different. It's, it's germane to this amendment. I mean, and Mr. Hayes, Mr. Hayes is probably going to address it. Just get go ahead, Mr. Mr. Hayes. So, um, I, 
I really kind of, I, I take offense from acting like we haven't done everything possible. Look, if you guys want something, I could probably get you a contract signed by Wednesday if you just want to go with, with what I can pop in, pop in your lap. If you want to trust me, I could probably get you a contract Wednesday at a suitable venue, at an at easy to get to location that's socially distanced and safe if you really want to do that. But um, this whole thing, like we're not ready, I could be ready right now. So if you really want to do that, look, I'd say we go to an executive session. We could. But, but there's other things there. So leaving 10 days, that's, that's a little more due diligence. Also, this whole thing, frankly, should be chunked out. Should we postpone? Are we going to actually make this decision on Memorial Weekend? Is that ready to go electronically? So this whole thing about, not, you know, it, it, if it would have been presented with all the dates, all the times, the motion, there would have been a motion to divide. So I, I think if you, if you give us some time, we'll give you some options. If you don't, if you if you don't want any time, look, I, I I got some things I could I could pull out real quick, but you might not be happy. So just saying, I mean, ten days probably don't even need that. Uh, another option also is adjourn this meeting to another time, adjourn this meeting to Saturday, and we next Saturday, and then we could finish this up because this is all within the same scope of what we're talking about. We could probably have have you some definite options there, and then you guys could make a decision. Are you prepared to move to a vote on the amendment? All right, Ms. Harlos, if you could take the roll. The motion is to amend the previous motion to add that the decision will have to be made with an electronic meeting within 10 days. Are we ready for the vote? I. Okay, I'm just making sure that was your instruction, Mr. Chair. Yep. Um, Ms. Bill Yu. Yes. Mr. Bishop Henchman. Aye. Mr. Goldstein. Yes. Mr. Hagan. Yes. I will vote yes. Mr. Hewitt. Yes. Dr. Lark. Aye. Mr. Longstreth. Yes. Ms. Matson. I vote yes. Mr. Merced. Aye. Mr. Nikala. Aye. Mr. Ford. Muted, Pat. I'll come back to Mr. Ford. Um, Mr. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Redpath. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Ms. Van Horn. Yes. Mr. Ford. No. Okay, we have 16 yes, uh, one no, Mr. Chair. Thank Excuse you. me, 15, uh, one. The amendment is adopted. Can you please read the entire motion with the amendment? Okay, we move to postpone the 2020 convention to an alternate date and slash or location to be chosen by the LNC to a physical location to take place no later than July 15th with a decision by the LNC made within 10 days from today by electronic meeting. Okay. Is there anyone who has further discussion on this amended motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a point of uh, inquiry. I okay, thought, inquiry, Mr. I thought the, secretary, the secretary said there has to be 10 days notice for any meeting, I believe. This says within 10 days, but I thought there was a requirement for 10 days notice. So I don't want the meeting to happen before then and then be ruled out of order. Um, um, if I may... this to a uh, time certain. Uh, correct, that's why it was worded that way. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, what'd you say, Mr. Chairman? So because we're in an electronic meeting that was properly noticed, we can adjourn this meeting that we're in uh, okay, to some later time down the road. Is there anyone else who wants to speak on this motion? With the indulgence of the body, I'm going to speak on the motion. I would urge the members of this committee to vote against this motion. I'm sorry, sir, I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Can everybody else oh, broke up for you, please? There's a background from somebody and I can't tell who it is. I think it's 
coming through somebody's speaker, but now it's not there anymore. Am I, am I hearable? Okay. I am going to vote against this motion. I appreciate all of the work that the Convention Oversight Committee has done, but everything in this motion is hope. It's optimism, it's desire. It wants a thing to be true that is no longer true. And if we don't face our reality, we can't adapt to the work that we need to do as a party. What we need to do as a party is nominate a presidential candidate with enough time to be able to have an effective campaign. We need to make sure that our delegates have the input on these things. We need to make sure that we don't add costs to what is already a difficult decision. I have heard people say, with these ballot access deadlines, we can just sue and win, but lawsuits aren't free, not in money and not in time. And we're already doing lawsuits to deal with the other parts of the pandemic that are not going away anytime soon. We will be over 100,000 fatalities attributed to COVID-19 by the end of the month, most likely. And what is more important is there, there are circumstances that have changed for every one of our delegates. There are economic circumstances that have changed. There are things that they will not be able to do for a postponed convention. They have already blocked out Memorial Day weekend. They've already done the travel. They've already done the things and waited for us. And we cannot wait any longer. We need to have a candidate who can campaign. We need to do the work of the party. And this is something that needs to be done. So I, I am going to vote against this. And then I'm going to ask to be recognized by Mr. Merced when he has the gavel back to propose that we have a convention online over Memorial Day weekend during the time that is already blocked out by our candidates and by our delegates. Point so, of uh, order. Point of order. Um, Mr. Chair, you've been presiding during um, this debate, and I would refer to Robert's page 405, in which the presiding officer cannot vote unless his vote is by ballot, which this is not, or is a tie, will um, break a tie or cause a tie. So unless that either of those may two not vote? may not. Okay, then take all that debate and I won't vote. I, I thought I had the option whether or not to vote um, I've been in every other LNC meeting. I brought this up on the LNC list about a month ago with the um, pages, but it is on page four to five. I can read it if you'd like. I, it's not necessary. Point of order, sir, we're out of time. I, I think um, those are just I shoulds, move, not cannots. I, I move to extend 15 minutes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I, I would... Back. suggest that you move to extend for at least 30 minutes because debate takes a long time in an electronic meeting. <laughs> well, I, okay, if you insist, Mr. Chairman, but uh, 30 Second. minutes. Thank you. All right. If there's no objection, we'll be extended for 30 minutes so we can continue uh, with the business. Hearing no objection, uh, Ms. Harlos, if you can proceed to a roll call on the motion and please read it just one more time um, so that everyone knows what it is. Okay, one second. Um, the motion is move to postpone the 2020 convention to an alternate date and slash or location to be chosen by the LNC um, to a new physical location no later to take place no later than July 15th, 2020, with a decision made by the LNC within 10 days from today by electronic meeting. Go ahead and take the roll. Thank you. Ms. Bill Yu? Yes. Mr. Bishop Henchman? Nay. Mr. Goldstein? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. I will vote yes, Mr. Hewitt. Mr. Yeah, Hewitt. You're muted, Jeff. Yes. Dr. Lark. 
You're also muted, Dr. Lark. Aye. Mr. Longstreth. No. Ms. Matson. Yes. Mr. Merced. Pass. Mr. Nikayla. Nay. Mr. Ford. No. I can't hear you, Mr. Ford. I'm sorry, no. Mr. Phillips. Pass. Mr. Redpath. No. Mr. Smith. Yes. Ms. Van Horn. Yes. Mr. Merced. I'll vote no. Mr. Phillips. Can I get the count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Nine yes. Six no's. No. Motion is nine to seven. It passes. Mr. Chairman, should we set a time for the electronic meeting that we have uh, required for 10 days from now? It's going to be a weeknight. Well, it's. It I believe I'm left. So that'd be Tuesday the 12th. Or earlier, we could adjourn, have an adjourned meeting. I'm okay with Tuesday if we could, the 12th. If we could, if we could yeah. do the adjourned meeting, could we hear from Mr. Hayes what a legitimate time frame is for him to have a solid answer? I mean, we have some solid proposals now. And if, I mean, if the LNC wants to go into executive session or something like that to discuss it, we, we, we could start talking about that. Mr. Um, Merced can have the gavel. Okay. Okay, Mr. Hayes, continue. No, that's, you know, I mean, uh, we, I, and if, if there, other COC members think that we can't get there by like next weekend, I mean, I think we could, I think we should be able to have some things there. Like if the, the LNC is saying they're going to make a decision, I think we could actually get that done by next weekend. I would like to make a motion. Oh, okay. Uh, I got hit. Uh, Harlos, then Moman, then Adams. Um, I would like. I, I would like to move to adjourn this meeting till next Saturday at the same time, which would be 12 Eastern. Got it. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, Hewitt. Second is a motion. Is there any objection to adjourning to same time next Saturday? Hearing no objection, then it passes. So we'll adjourn the meeting to this time next Saturday. Mr. Oh, Mr. yes, Mr. Mullman? Mr. Mullman. I know the meeting's adjourned, but mm -hmm. um, if the LNC members could take a look at the two proposals that they have, if they have any feedback, mm -hmm. please send that back to the COC. Mm -hmm. um, we meet we meet every Monday and also randomly throughout the week as needed. So and remember those motion those uh, uh, proposals should be marked confidential if they're not. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, I would, um, with the indulgence of the COC, I, I would like to ask that those plans have a little more detail for us as far as what the uh, um, alternatives will be for people that have health issues that may have trouble entering. Attending. There's been much. There's been much discussion about that. Yes. Yes, I know there's been a lot of discussion. I'm just don't. I'm not aware of the details. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Well. We'll get yeah. there. We kind of. We, yeah. Thank you. Um, with the LNC's permission, I'm going to end the live stream now since the meeting is no longer in session, but I will defer to what you would like me to do. 
Um, we're no longer in session, so I would agree. Agreed. And we are not going to executive session. No, we're no, adjourned. We're adjourned. We're adjourned. We can't go to executive session. I figured that's what it meant. Just wanted to make sure. And thank, thank you, COC. You got your work cut out now for sure. And uh, bring us the best. Wow, it's like you've been doing in the past. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks so much.